Good morning. This morning's verse is from the book of Isaiah. It's Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. You know, what a fantastic verse in the midst of today's chaos. We look around at the world and we feel we feel that it's out of control. I feel that it's out of control. Every single day I wonder what is going on and yet there is hope. And the beauty is that that hope lies in the everlasting God. It's fantastic that we have a God that loves us so much. Not only did he create us, not only did he send Jesus back to save us, but that he walks with us every single day in the form of the Holy Spirit. But let's look at this verse. It starts off with a question, a couple questions. Have you not known? Meaning, do you not know this? Are you not aware that there is a God? Have you not heard? Did nobody tell you? Did you miss the memo effectively? The creator, the God, our everlasting God is the creator of the ends of the earth. Now, when when I was a kid, I remember hearing this and I remember thinking the ends of the earth, all the possible different things that are going to go wrong and going to be um, destructive and, and disparaging and just leave everything torn apart at the ends of the earth. But that's not how I'm reading it today. Today, I'm reading it as the ends of the earth, both ends, the beginning and the end. I mean, let's face it, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, He is the creator of all things. He was here before the beginning. And I can't imagine what that must have been like. I mean, in my mind, I guess I have this this visual of sitting in a, in a pitch black room with only my thoughts. But again, to get even further down on this, He does not grow faint, faint or weary, but skip that for a second. I want to get down to the last part. When I start to think about what was it like, what was it like for God before before man, before earth, before anything? What was that like? And when I start to think about that, I simply cannot comprehend what that must have been like. So as I look at this, his understanding is unsearchable. Now, I really don't like that translation. It makes him sound like Google. It makes him sound like I can go to god.google.com sorry probably google.god.com but nonetheless it just makes it sound like like there's a scientific approach to it. like there's a question I can ask and not get an answer like I should be able to go through some master database in, in the creation of the world and find the answer and our, our scientific minds actually make us think this way it makes us think that we are the greatest thing since sliced bread but that 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 could be so far from the truth. I mean, just look at what man does to himself. Look at the wars that are going on. Look at the terrible things that, that we do to each other as human beings. But what this verse is, what this section of the verse is saying, that he, his understanding is unsearchable. What it's saying is that it is immeasurable. There is no way for us to measure that. I mean, I did a quick search, two searches. This is kind of funny. I did two searches today using my phone. One of them I asked, how much of the human mind does a human use? And it said, through, through the course of our life, we use our entire mind every single day. Mm, I don't think so. I've seen some people up there. The other search said that through the course of his lifetime, a human uses 10% of his brain through his entire lifetime. Now let's think about that. Using that number, if we only use 10% of what God has given us, how could we possibly think that what we know would be any way to even come up with the experiment or the questions to ask to understand God. So is he unsearchable? Yeah, not because he is unsearchable, because we can't begin to understand how to even formulate the right questions for him to be able to explain something that our simple minds can't do. Look at a computer. The computer, when built, even if to perfection, can do nothing until it's programmed. And God spends our entire lives programming us, teaching us, loving us, nurturing us, guiding us, disciplining us. We might not like that, but the reality is it's true. So when we stop and think about how fantastic our Creator is, He does not grow faint or weary. Thank God He doesn't. Because, man, 
I can certainly be frustrating. I know that there's people that can attest to that. And yet, he has patience. The patience of only God. The patience only God could have with me. And my guess is if you search your database, you'll find the same thing about you. So thank God we have a God that does not grow weary or faint. He was there from our beginning to our end, but not only that, the beginning of everything. And we get to be with him past the end. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for walking with me so I can hear the voice that leads me to eternity. Because let's face it, my understanding is not going to get me there. My understanding by myself will never get me there. So thank you, God, for that. So again, Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Father God, thank you for taking time out of everything to guide me for taking time to love me, for taking time to discipline me. Lord, I know I don't deserve any of the mercies and I don't deserve any of the grace that you have given me time and time again. And yet, you love me so much as to show me right from wrong. Watch me do wrong, forgive me, and love me anyway. Lord, you love me despite who I am. Created in your perfect image, I screw it up every day. And yet you never, ever lose love in me. So thank you, God, for that. Lord, we look around this world and we see the mess that it is. And Lord, we know it is not your fault. And if we could pray correctly, Lord, we would see you so much more. But we get lost in our own stuff. We get lost with our own agenda. And we pray for our own wants, even if we consider that they are needs. Lord, we don't have the understanding that you do. And if we did have that understanding, Lord, we would pray for the things that are your will. And in that, Lord, we would see prayers answered. So please, Lord, align our prayers with your will so that we can see you, so that we can go and spread you. And we never have to ask the questions to anybody, have you not known, have you not heard? Father God, please help us to walk forward in your message, with your word, of your son, and talk about how you saved us, and talk about the resurrection, and talk about how you sent the Holy Spirit to walk with us every single day, how you gave us a new heart and put a spirit in us to guide us. <sighs> Father God, thank you for placing me where you have and making me who I am. Father God, please guide me to be who you want me to be such that I can do what you want me to do. Father God, I ask this in your son Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all oh, will see how great our God. Wow, how great is our God. I pray that today you see how great our God is. I pray that today you dig deep and take a look at how great he is, how he was here before the beginning, and he'll be there after the end. And I pray that you know Jesus, and I pray that the Holy Spirit is in you and guiding you so that you can spend your eternity with God. Remember, no matter how far down a road you might be, no matter how far you think you might be from God, He's always right there with you. So turn around and 
find it today. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.